<laughs> okay, we're up and running, and we're recording live onto the Connect for Climate page. Uh, to get us going, we're going to have a video message from uh, the actress Rosario Dawson. Rosario is one of the ambassadors to the Connect for Climate program, and this is her message to us here at the Climate Conference. I'm very excited to be uniting for climate. We are going further, faster, together. This is an opportunity for us as a global citizenry to stand up, to be able to say, we recognize that our environment is tremendously important and needs to be our number one priority. We're losing the opportunity of recognizing our climate change refugees really need our help. Our islands that are in trouble because they're, they're slowly starting to recede under the water. The storms that are happening, you know, it's not enough to kind of continue to put a Band-Aid on it and raise some funds and send some clothes when something terrible happens. We have to start being more thoughtful and being ahead of the game. We do not resolve this. We don't get to deal with any of the other problems. This is our number one issue. It needs young people. It needs people in, in political office. It needs folks there at the UN. It needs everybody to really come together and unite for climate with us so that we can have a future for our grandchildren and great-grandchildren that isn't just a bunch of AI robots going once upon a time they were humans. <laughs> Thank you. That was Rosario Dawson who, who gave us a message of uh, inspiration from the Web Summit, uh, the Planet Tech stage at the Web Summit. Um, <clears throat> and her support was really in, within the whole framework of this uniting for climate action that we need to go further, faster together. The, the messaging that's really behind the whole conference. And you might remember that we launched this during the UN General Assembly with the Fijian Ministry and, and uh, with the, the COP23 presidency. Um, it's been a fantastic campaign and it really has underlined, underlined the, the messaging going in and through this conference. So maybe just to give you some of the highlight numbers that we got out of that whole campaign. Um, so on, on Twitter, we, we, over, over, the two, uh, over the last two weeks, we had 340 million impressions. Um, that's with 15,000 mentions and about 10,000 retweets. So the engagement was very strong, especially for the digital surge, which we ran in collaboration with the UN Foundation on the first day on the opening of the conference on November the 6th. Um, since then, we've also been producing uh, Facebook Live videos. We've had more than 50 videos go up on the Connect for Climate channel, both on the Hack for Climate experience as well as the, the youth and education events. And then we've also been uh, live streaming from the World Bank Pavilion all around this Uniting for Climate uh, message. And that's also really the message that we would like to thank the, the German ministries for because that, that is a message we see here in the pavilion that we're going together to, uh, to, to implement the climate <laughs> solutions that we need. Um, overall, the discussion was pretty much in every country. Um, there are citations in, in more than uh, 800 uh, news outlets. So it it's really has been a, a strong message that the COP presidency has, has picked up and taken to the rest of the world. Um, so with that, I'd like to also really just uh, introduce Nick um, Berglinger. Nick, thank you for joining us. So we partnered with Nick on the Hack for Climate Experience, which was one of the events that happened on the sidelines of the climate conference. Uh, we had a lot of events happening within the Bond Zone, uh, including the Youth Day, the Education Day, the Momentum for Change Award Ceremony. But there was a lot of stuff also happening outside of the Bond Zone, which, which um, brought in the broader public and also brought in expertise on different um, industries that we wouldn't necessarily have here in the Bonn Zone. And Hack for Climate in particular focused on how to use a blockchain to um, you know, amplify climate solutions. And you brought in over 100 hackers to really take that, that challenge forward. So maybe you could give us a quick overview of what happened at, at Hack for Climate. Thank you, Max. I'd like to first uh, thank the German government for doing a great job and also thank the World Bank with, Hack, uh, with uh, Connect for Climate. You really helped us a lot uh, in our endeavor, Hack for Climate. Uh, so the main reason why we do this is that we are firm believers that the world is moving from central to decentral systems and that in this movement uh, there's one technology one really needs to pay a lot of attention to and that's the distributed ledger technology uh, which is commonly uh, called blockchain. And um, in order to um, make 
raise awareness on this issue, we, we have uh, performed Hack for Climate by doing pre-workshops in 17 global blockchain centers. We had 500 top quality applications from which of, of highly uh, uh, talented uh, developers, software developers. We selected the top 100, um, invited them to Bonn and hacked I programmed for four and a half days. Um, our main message is this is a technology which has to be understood by regulators because if the world goes from central to decentral, it really means a shift also in regulation. The, the most obvious example is probably energy, whereas in, in the past more we had central plants, central power plants, distribution networks and then individual consumers more and more we really have a scenario where uh, we're, we're going from a, to a, to a bottom-up system where you have prosumers consuming and producing energy and that is a entirely new structure. Power basically flows bottom-up and no longer top-down and that means that these types of innovations need to be fitting into the regulatory frameworks that exist. So yeah. if we have regulation geared for, for uh, central structures, these innovations will not um, gain ground fast enough. And, and they have to gain ground, not because technology is cool, it is, but because we need climate action, and, and we just uh, spoke before, I think you know the, the urgency of, of climate action, the, the fact that we have to reduce emissions very substantially in a very, very short, short time period is really the main issue we all have to deal with. And, and technology can play a big part, and particularly distributed ledger technologies are, are, are crucial uh, for, for speeding up and going to to scale. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Nick. And, and with that, I'd like to hand it over to Ingrid Hoven. Ingrid is the Director General of Global Issues at the German Ministry for International Cooperation. Uh, thank you for joining us. So you, you, you just heard that technology innovation is really happening. Um, there are other audiences besides the ones here in the COP zone who are also addressing the climate issue and who are taking this forward. And, and that is actually really exciting that while we might see slow progress on negotiations, while we might be faced with the climate reality that we are at 1.1 degrees uh, b before uh, pre-industrial area, and, and that global greenhouse gases, uh, gas emissions are rising, there's also a great um, energy out there that we see amongst the technology innovators, amongst the, the youth, amongst um, the educators that they really want to take this forward and want to be part of the solution to building a low carbon resilient future. So what have, what have your impressions been over the last two, two weeks and, and what are your main takeaways? Yeah, thank you so much. And I would first like to um, underline and appreciate. Let's just check if, yeah, okay. It's on. I would first like to underline and appreciate uh, the results of Connect for Climate because I think you can reach out uh, through your campaign, through the activities, through Facebook, actually to the younger audience. And quite frankly, we are here in Bonn, we are negotiating the future of the people that I have now 20 years or 18 years, so it's about their future. But are these voices heard? Uh, do we capture this, what they would like to see us to do here uh, between those, those walls? And therefore, I think it's so important to invest in this type of outreach activities to make sure that we have a stronger voice. Politicians and decision makers really get pushed uh, by the younger generation to move things into the right direction. A couple of days ago, again, Christiana Figuer is underlined, we have to peak CO2 emissions in 2020. Unless we do so, I mean, the probability to reach um, 2 degrees Celsius or even 1.5, which means survival for the small island states or not, quite frankly, it won't be feasible. And this year, and we have heard this also from youth representatives, we see again a CO2 emission slightly increasing. 
not flattening out as the last two years. So this is really worrying. Um, and therefore, I think, I mean, these type of activities to reach out, educate younger people, make them strong in defending the rights that they have is so important. Um, when we speak about climate justice, it's not about my generation. It's really about the planet that we leave to, to our children and grandchildren. Well, on, on, on the impressions, I, I think we have had a, a wonderful dialogue atmosphere. Uh, we saw this in the Talanoa space that was organized by the Fijian presidency. We have different stakeholders, the business community, energy industry, NGOs and uh, government representatives uh, came together. Um, are the results ambitious enough? We are going to see. I think we have quite accomplished um, a, a lot on the agenda. Um, but certainly the forthcoming months on the run-up to Katowice is going to show whether we actually live up to the expectations of the younger generation. Yeah, and, and I think the ambition, the excitement there is very much bringing in the business environment, bringing in uh, the, the regional and the city leaders. And, and there we've seen a lot of progress here in the Bonn Zone and also bringing in the young innovators. And, and that's where w w we celebrate um, the outcomes from the Hack for Climate. Um, maybe you could just highlight some of the solutions that the hackers actually uh, brought to the table. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's the, the, the good story of all this. We have uh, a huge ambition ahead of us in the sense of trying to reach 1.5 degrees, but we have also so many exciting areas that, where we see so much breakthrough innovation that I'm still hopeful that we can do it. Um, it is just, you know, high time to not just talk about it, but actually, you know, get it out on the ground and, and, and get it implemented. And when we look now at, at, at the developments that happened, we, we saw uh, talented young guys making, uh, s uh, bringing forward solutions in a short period of time that are really extraordinary. We have um, ways to, for example, um, organized finance for uh, in the Red Plus program in a completely new way where uh, using the blockchain vastly increases transparency, therefore increases trust and therefore increases stakeholder involvement. So we have ways of, of pointing very clearly where forest areas are in danger. We have ways of channeling, channeling finance, even from private individuals, to specific plots somewhere in the Amazon where information technology really helps us to, to leap forward. Yeah. And, and when we look at what happens in sensors, in the Internet of Things, then this can bring us to a whole new level of MRV. This, is, this, is, this, can, start, this can lead into a world not so far from now where you, me, everybody measures at home we get we get emission data pollution data weather data that can vastly in, increase efficiencies and really bring about uh, new solutions that 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 may uh, lead us to to actually reaching the goals we've set uh, in Paris and and we were on a small island hacker boat uh, symbolizing a, a small island state and and trying to make clear that we are 1.5 guys we want to you know have a Fiji in the future and and we think the Fiji must be there and therefore 1.5 is really where we should 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 aim for exactly and and it's really this next industrial revolution that that we're in the midst of and that's what's so exciting yeah. for the young people out there they they want to be a part of that revolution they want to be a part of this new economy um, I mean the the, the uh, new climate economy for example estimates that we're going to be investing about 90 trillion dollars over the next 15 years into connected low carbon resilient infrastructure um, the IFC the International Finance Corporation of the World Bank estimates that <coughs> the number is 23 trillion dollars just for emerging markets that's the growth nations so there's, there's a huge new economy that we're going to be building um, and young people want to be part of that. So maybe just your impressions on, on, and your message to, to the younger audience on Facebook. Yeah, perhaps in order uh, to, to mention another area where I think that new technology is going to be of utmost importance and younger people are already using it, it's on mobility in cities. 
What we observe in Germany is actually that the, the transportation pattern of younger people has changed dramatically. Not necessarily they really strive for a car, an individual car, but in cities they have really changed their behavior and they are going, I mean, they are adapting new technologies and they are using more sustainable transport networks, for instance, like car sharing and, and other types of mobility systems. So, yeah, I would absolutely agree. And the younger generation, they are really equipped to deal with those no, new technology more forcefully than we probably could. So, on, for the young generation on, on, on Facebook, please stay engaged, uh, make your voice heard. It's about your future and push us harder so that we take the right decision. Those that take decisions, the governments, the private sector, the businesses, and those that actually are now in charge. And please, be heard. Thank you for that. And maybe just one more fact I'd like to leave you with. Um, in the control room, when we did the, the moon landing, how old do you think the average age was in the control room on the day of the moon landing? Um, um, 40 years? 40 years, exactly. So the average age was 26 years. Oh, wow. And that was that generation's biggest challenge to land somebody on the moon. It is our generation's biggest challenge to tackle climate change, to build a low-carbon resilient future. So really, it is, you know, our role as, as older people or as, as, as regulators is to make the space for the young innovators to be a part of that solution. And with that, um, we'd like to thank you very much. And we're going to play a closing video to underlie the overall message of the climate conference. I am Frank Bainamarama, the Prime Minister of Fiji and also President of COP23. We are uniting for climate. We are uniting for climate action. Further, faster, together. We are uniting for climate. Further, faster, together. We are uniting for climate. Further, faster, and together. We are uniting for climate action. Further, faster, and together. <laughs> we are uniting for climate. Further, faster, and together. We are uniting for climate action. We're uniting for climate action. <laughs> we are uniting for climate. Further, faster, together. Further, faster, together. Further, faster, together. together. Join us. Vinaka. Well, thank you very much. Thank you to the panel and thank you to the audience. We are uniting for climate and we're going further, faster, together. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well done.